Hello guys and welcome to the to the E class. This is my first time doing this. I always wanted to do it for many years, but uh, never got the chance to do it. So here we go. So if I seem a little bit, um, you know, not 100%, bear with me. All right. So today we're gonna do the class or a refresher class on C++, and uh, I'm going to do a walkthrough uh, of the tutorial. So that will help you out. I'm not going to complete the complete the whole assignment, but I'm going to actually do part of it. And then I will leave the rest of it for you to complete on your own. So let's get busy. So uh, earlier I was actually started working on it. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to minimize this. Uh, I'm going to start from scratch. Yeah, so basically here's the problem. We need to create a program that does that does this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the process of doing all of this, but I'll leave, uh, I'm going to do part of this job and then the rest will be on for you. Now, uh, of course, all the guidelines, the information you need are already available on these slides, which is already on Moodle. So all the variables, the functions and the stuff are all already there. So let's get to it. So I'm going to start from scratch. So I'm going to remove all of this back here so this is the start where I am I'm gonna start with the empty file I need to basically let's take a look at what the program wants so the first thing is uh, display a welcoming message to the user okay I don't memorize C++ code anymore so instead I'm gonna go and go to W3 schools just Google W3 C++ and you come to get started I think or intro no, it's get started. So get started and you get to the hello world program. It's a good and nice way to start. So I'm just going to copy paste this whole part and come to Genie. So in Genie, I'm just going to place this file and then file save as I already created the folder ENM3023 and the file name. Don't forget to follow the the, the convention so ls1 lab sheet one and then your ID number I'm just put a random number here and don't forget CPP save and then I know it's already there just replace it so this is the file now before we go any further just to make sure that the installation is done correctly on your computer just just run and execute and you can see hello world we're good to go so then what we're gonna do now is to actually start playing with this program to turn it into the program needed for the assignment so i'm gonna i already did some of that parts so i'm just gonna borrow here so this is gonna be the first line so here we go so hello and welcome to the program and then a couple of lines save okay then what uh, okay fine let's run it so run this compile build execute oh it's probably already open Okay, save the file, compile, build, and execute. Hello and welcome to the program. Okay, maybe my spelling is off, but this is hello. Okay, so next, what's next? So what's the program else want? So ask the user to input the first integer. Ask the user to input the first integer. Okay, let's do that. So if you want to ask the guy something, you just have to simply tell the user what to do. So I'm just going to basically come here now and do this. So this is essentially the same line as this. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it again. So this is the first line. It's going to, I like to organize my code, so I'm going to tap. So again, so basically I want to send a message to the user to tell him to give me a value. So another C out, but this time I'm going to ask the user to input something. So Please enter the first integer. Okay, and that basically will tell the user to input the first integer. And uh, as a matter of organization, I'm just going to put a comment here and say first number. So basically, a bunch of code going to be put here. They're going to be related to the first number. So that will be ask the user to input the number and then check if the number is predefined limit before we do that we have to capture the user input so let's get back to that so user input right there so as you can see from the tutorial here it says first you have to create a variable this is where we're gonna what's going on here essentially is like this 
we have to define a variable. Let's, in this case, it's called x. Then we're going to tell the user, type a value or give me something. Then what we're going to do is going to do cn. cn essentially means cn. It essentially, is going to capture whatever user input it, and then it's going to assign it to this variable right here. If you try to do to ignore this line, you're going to get an error because it's going to tell you what is x. I don't know what this is. Now, what is this right here? Essentially, it's a confirmation line. Essentially, the program will reply back and say, oh, thank you. Here's the number that you inputted. So this way, you, this kind of confirmation is essentially to make sure or to tell the user that you got everything or he got or the program captured the correct value. So let's copy all of this and then we play with it in our own program. We come here now and here we go. So then I usually don't like to put the variables in the middle of the program like that, but uh, it's okay. We'll modify that later. Uh, let's call it A and then uh, this one we already did up there. So yeah, you know what? Let's just do that. So let's just put this guy here. So that will be the first number. And then we're going to ask him to capture the value. Then we're going to assign it to A, not X. Uh, I like to make my comments organized and here. Uh, this one is self explanatory, right? So assign A, assign user input value to A. And next, display the input value. Okay, so this one is the int the number or the integer is the first integer. No, your first integer is, and then so what's going on here in this line is that we're creating a string, and then we basically sort of glue this value, well, would not x, a now. So what's going to happen in this code here? First of all, we declare a variable, but we don't assign any value to it. Basically, we just declare that empty variable called a. Then we ask the user, please user, give me a value. Then we take the value that the user inputted, and then we assign it to a. Then as a matter of confirmation, we just display a message that says, oh, thank you, this is the message that you, this is the number that you inputted. So let's run that. So save the file. Compile, build, and run, or execute. Please input the first integer, 5. Your first integer is, sorry, 4. Your first integer is 4. Why there is a semi? Um, oh, OK, sorry. It's right here. So let's clean that one. and. So let's start again, um, save the file, compile, build, and execute. Hello and welcome to the program. Hit enter the register 5. Your first integer is 5. Thank you very much. So now what are we going to do right now? OK, let's see what, the pro what else the program wants. Uh, assignment. Check if the value is within a predefined limit. And make sure that the limit is equal to number 8. OK, what does that mean is that we need to make sure that the user cannot input a number greater than 8. 8 or less than 8. OK, so how do we going to work? So obviously, we're going to need an if statement of some sort. So if statement, where is the if statement? Operators, no, or conditions, sorry, conditions, not operators, conditions. And the if statement is right here. If a certain value is so copy, go back to the program, and we're going to put a value here. And we're going to do that here, actually, not here. What we're going to do is we're going to take the if statement that we just copied and we just put it here. We're going to say, if certain condition is true, do something. And you see, here's what we're going to do. Um, I'll get back to this. So let's say if a, if, wait, if a is greater than 8, yeah, 8. OK, before I'm, this is going to, 
You see, here's the, you have to think right now, what kind of code or condition you're gonna put here. So what, you have to think about the logic here a little bit. What do you want to see? What do you want to do right now? If the value was within the limit, meaning the limit is eight, right? If it's less than eight, then proceed, right? So we don't want to check whether it's less than a great, instead we have to check if the condition is not met. So I'm gonna say that one more time. When you're doing a condition or sort of a check condition, right? You wanna check if the condition has not been met because if the condition has not been met, then you can do the correction inside here. Because if the condition has been met, there is nothing to do, right? If the condition has been met, just carry on with the program. Is that right? So I'm gonna put if number or if a is on oh, no, no. if number is greater than eight outside limit. Yes, if number is outside the limit, in other words, bigger than eight or bigger than eight, then fix it. Is that right? What are we gonna do? First of all, uh, here. If the value is not okay, that's why we say here the not condition, not the yes condition. You have to check if the condition has not been met. Inform the user invalid, ask the user again and recheck. We'll come back to this in a minute, but first come back here. Inform user. Um, what was that? Forgot. Ask to re enter. And then, what is that? Okay, re enter, uh, recheck. And then we're gonna re keep repeating that until the guy finally listens and gives us what we want. So, what's the condition again? If A is greater than or equal. See, if you put greater or greater than, I'm, I'll accept both. But for now, I'm gonna say greater than. So it cannot be, can be, uh, cannot be eight itself. So, uh, sorry, eight itself can, because. Um, Basically, less than or equal A will be accepted. So if you didn't do that, if you put just less than 8, it's fine. Okay, so uh, greater than 8. So if the value is greater than 8, what are you going to do? First of all, we're going to tell the guy. Uh, uh, invalid entry. Uh, invalid entry. Oh, yeah, wait a minute. There is a problem here. We did not tell the user in the beginning that there is a limit to begin with, right? So, see, he might be saying, wait a minute, you didn't tell me it was invalid, so I have to tell him right here. And for an int integer that is less, uh, less than 8. If it's less than 8, then 8 itself is not included. So, I'll put it here. So, less than 8, meaning, uh, of course, 8 is less than 8. No, 8 is not less than 8, so it's not. You know what? Let's just do that. Less than or equal. Yeah, less than 8. Okay, let's just do that. So less than 8. So what's going to happen here? What's, what will happen here is that we inform the user from the beginning that, you know what, that we need the limit to be less than 8. Okay? And uh, if the value was greater than or equal to 8, then we are we are here. Otherwise, it's going to be the integer here, right? And you know what? I'm going to run it right now. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. Um, I know this is if statement is not complete yet, but I'm just going to test the OK condition. So successfully build and run. So I'm going to put a number that is already less than 8. So not going to be a problem. So yes. Now let's try that again. And this time I'm going to purposely put Oh yeah, um, we didn't do we didn't do the whole thing. Yeah, invalid entry. The integer must be less than eight. Okay, so we have to copy and the integer v must be less than eight. Okay, let's just do that first and see what's gonna happen and execute. So I'm gonna put eight. 8 is not less than 8, so invalid entry, the integer, the integer less than, ah, oh, shoot, the integer must be less than 8. So I'm going to close this, the integer 
must be less than 8 and don't forget to put a new line here uh, you notice by the way something funny happened that um, this line it run even though that this was not okay but uh, let's just do that again uh, so compile and run so okay I did not let it build properly okay so execute so I'm gonna put 5 okay thank you but it's not uh, of course I know what some of you are already thinking so why are you using an if statement you have to use a while I know but I'll get back I'll get to that in a minute so go here so I put an 8 8 is not less than 8 so this will fail but then it doesn't fail see invalid entry integer must be less than 8 but then nevertheless it just takes the number anyway right your first integer is 8 and then moves on so that's because what happens is that yes this has been true but then after you execute this line it continues and simply prints the value as is you know what I mean uh, we need to need this part here but yeah you know I mean so what's going on here so far into this program is after you check the value I'm gonna call this check condition after you check the condition it does not get back to the user I mean okay invalid entry all right so we're gonna after if you remember in the question right it says inform the user ask the user to re-input again okay here's the ask the user to re-input again all of this we're gonna do it one more time here so we're gonna have to take this value again so what's going on here is <clears throat> invalid entry the integer must be less than 8 okay then we do this again uh, and now that we that he made a mistake no more please so enter the first integer that is less than 8 okay less than 8 and then because the user re-inputted the value you must recapture the value and that's right here and by right it's supposed to go back and test again but this is an if statement so it won't go back so it's just gonna run here and then after that it's gonna capture the value and I'm gonna, gonna print out so let's try that and see what's going to happen okay let's start with uh, something that is already less than eight five okay works let's try that again so compile I'm gonna try again this time but with bad number so I'm gonna put a nine now a nine so nine invalid entry integer must be less than eight enter the first integer must be less than eight okay I listen to you I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna ignore you again I'm gonna put nine again and guess what the program works your first integer is nine and that's the problem with the if statement if you didn't catch what, what, what just happened I'll do it again so the guy asked me now to input a number that is less than eight I'm gonna ignore that I'm gonna put a nine invalid entry must be less than eight you know what I'm gonna ignore you again so put nine again boom it works meaning the test or the checking happens only once because the if statement only works once if this condition is not true this block will not run we're gonna come here so let's read the code see welcome program uh, assign a value and then ask for the number and then capture the number and then we're gonna check now if the number is less than the limit then this will be false because if it was less than eight this will be false and if it's false none of this will happen or we come here and this is what happens when you when the condition is okay so when I put here and I put five five is not greater than or equal to eight so this whole block will not run so when I put five and I put enter this whole block is going to be ignored and then we're going to come to here and that's what the okay condition is so now let's do this one more time but this time let's see what happens if I put a number that is equal to 9 so 9 is actually is greater than or equal to 8 is all right so this block will work so we're gonna go inside here It's gonna tell me invalid entry must be a number than 8 and then it's gonna ask me again to input a number is all right and then it's gonna capture the value of the user it's all right 
But even if I do that again, it's going to continue. This is an if statement. It's not a loop. So it's going to just run as usual. So the testing is going to happen only once, which is this is the one time that it's doing the testing. So if I ignore that, that thing again, or zero is, is actually, so I put that, if I ignore that again, it's going to work. So to make this work in a loop, simply I have to change this to while. So this is what meant by recheck and repeat until the user input the value within the limit. Essentially, this is what we'll do. What's going to happen now, other than a if statement, the while loop is going to simply repeat this process again and again and again until you do it, until the value is, in fact, less than 8. This will become false, and then you will exit the loop and you can continue. So that will only work if the condition has been met. So let's execute again. I'll compile, build, execute. So 9, nope. 9 again. No, nine again, forever nine is always going to be bad. So then, okay, five, it works. So we have achieved our first objective, which is essentially to tell the user that, make sure that is actually, that, that this part was done. And then capture the value and display it to the user. We've already done that. Okay, so now repeat the same process, but for function B. No problem. It's going to go back to Genie, and then we're going to simply Take all of this, actually, no, all of this, actually, yeah, yeah, this whole block is for the first number, right? It's going to repeat the whole thing and put it here to the second number. And I know what some of you are already thinking, this is not a good practice, just bear with me. Um, when you write a program, don't think about efficiency first. Think about functionality first. Make sure it runs, make sure it works, and then you can work on improvement later. If you try to combine functionality and efficiency at the, at the same time, or while you are still developing, things are going to get ugly. So instead, develop first, write the program, even though it's bad, even though you feel it's repetitive or not a good way of doing things, that doesn't matter. Just do it first, make it run, and then improve later. So. Now we're going to do integer b and input, enter the first, now it's not first anymore, it's now second integer, that is less than 8, and then we assign it to value b. Check condition, now we're going to check b now, and from the user, uh, integer must be less than 8, okay, uh, this one again, second. And then we assign it to B, and then we check the value for B. Is that right? Compile, successfully build, successfully, and then run. OK, so 5 is valid. Your first integer is, oh, wait, I forgot a new line somewhere. Uh, here, yes. Okay, I'm going to put a new line, but if I put it here, it won't work because we're adding a number. So I'm going to do it here. So this essentially is a new line after the value for A. Put a space here. I'm not sure if that's going to work. Yeah, work. Oh, okay, work. So five. Yes, your first integer is 5, and now we do it again. And I want, I want a space. So come back here. One more and right here. That'll give me more space. And run, run. So 5. Yes, your first integer is 5. Please enter the second integer that is less than 8. I'm going to put an 8, which is, which is going to fail. So no. Nope. So 9 is going to fail, so keep on 8 and 9 is going to fail until we put 7, which is going to work. So now we have captured both values. Is that right? Okay, what's next? So that is actually achievement or requirement number 2. Is that right? Okay. 
summation and exit program. If both numbers are okay, then calculate the sum and display the summation and exit with a thank you. Okay, let's do that. So now we're gonna go to here and copy this number. I'm gonna put summation and exit. So now that we have captured already part A, so I'm gonna say int sum, then sum equal to A plus B. Actually, this is a redundant step. We could we didn't have to actually, actually we could have worked without the sum variable altogether, but again, don't worry about this in the beginning. We, we do the program first and then we work on improvement later on. Then I want to repeat this line, but then instead of display the number B, we're going to simply display the, num the, sum the summation. So we're going to, yeah, uh, no, 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 get back here and get back here. And what we're going to do is the sum, the sum of, oh, that's nice. Let's just, you know what, the sum of first and second and second integers is and then we're going to put here sum before i get to that i need to repeat this part right here but for the second number yeah okay let's see how this works oh uh, you know what let's put that here too compile run okay so execute so let's make sure they both work so six so the sum of the first and second integers is 11 which is five plus six and this is essentially the requirements of the assignment the, the minimum requirement the bonus requirement hmm let's just say that I'm in a good mood and I'm going to help you to do bonus some of the bonus requirements say these two uh, yeah I'm gonna stop at the first three only I'll leave the rest for you to do so yeah actually the first two are almost the same thing because if you can allow them to set the limit manually then you can actually allow the user to set separate values and I think I'm gonna do this one first function now you know what I'll do this one first so let's get back to the genie program. So I see what we did right here when we put the limit, it was essentially what is called hard coding. Uh, you know what, before we get to that, I'm gonna organize this program a little bit. I don't like how this program runs a little bit. So I'm gonna come here and do some organization. We declared three variables, A, B, and sum. And I don't like how they are displayed like this. And they're all integers. So I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come here x i'm gonna put it here integer and then i'm gonna do integer a b and sum that's it this is called a multiple line or multiple variable summation and then i'm gonna throw away these lines in fact we really don't need some i could have just take this line right here and put it here can we i'm sure i'm not sure if you can do that but let's try give it a try I have a feeling this one wouldn't work because this is now strings, but let's give it a run, give it a try. Oh, successful. Oh, not successful. Yeah, I think, yeah, uh, warning, variable sum, set but not used, okay. So warning, it's actually not a problem, but let's just run it anyway. What is going on? Oh yeah, because I, I still have the formula somewhere. Yeah, this is... This is still gonna give me a warning. It's actually, okay, when you see this, by the way, it's not an error, it's just a warning They're telling me that the sum was not used. I can still com build and compile and run the program. Okay. So enter the program, five, six, 23, invalid entry, three. Okay, so five plus four is nine, and it worked. 
that means this part right here actually works so we don't really need some but you know what I, we might need it so it's gonna put some back here so sum is equal to this and over here now is this and compile again so this would go away okay okay what else can we improve here uh, I organize I usually like to put variables in the beginning of the program variables this way I can keep track of my program so this welcoming message is usually here by the way um, Oh, no, this is not Python. Okay, so this is the welcoming message. Okay, let's just put here welcoming message, and then here is the code for the first number. Okay, and this one we can throw away now. If outside the limit of ah, let's do this. If greater than limit. Oh yeah, if if greater than yeah, if outside limit is better, if outside limit. Okay, and just copy this. B and throw away this. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean up a little bit more. So in, in to, to, I don't like the capital letters. Did you? And also, less than eight just a little bit of housekeeping must be oh you know I just do this okay and okay copy this copy V Oh, yes. Um, no, 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 it's not a problem, but we'll come back to that. Oh, yeah, enter the first integer. Yeah, we'll come back to that. And then, yeah, we'll come back here and copy. And also here. And also. I think that's a little bit of cleaning and uh, a little bit more here and a little bit more here and this integers okay all right so compile make it a habit that after you make changes no matter how much or how simple you think those changes are always run the program and to make sure that everything works okay this looks a little bit easier or a little bit cleaner okay so now what the one we're gonna do next is we're gonna actually uh, in, allow the user to input or set the limits so allow user to set the limits for you know what I'm gonna put this in a bonus video as well so as of now this is it this is the minimum requirement program this is the, re the requirement that actually is all the way up to this point and in fact it also is organized and clear and everything so up to this point you're good to go I'm gonna make another video just for the bonus requirement and then you're gonna do you can actually watch those in a separate video so all the best guys and uh, yep yeah, see you next in the next one